OK, so this is the Clip-It interface. Uh, when a clip is loaded, um, what you can see here is this dashed line down the center. This is the clip timeline. And this counter on the left um, shows the current cursor position. Here's the cursor. This is the current cursor position as a frame number. And this is the current cursor position in seconds. So this is the main cursor. And it can be moved on the timeline either by just putting the mouse cursor on it and then holding the left mouse button and dragging it, like so. As you can see, the frame number is moving. But alternatively, you can just put the mouse cursor anywhere on the timeline and double click and the cursor will jump to that position. Again, just double click. Now the alternative ways of moving the mouse cursor are using these um, go to start and go to end buttons. If I click go to end, as you can see, the cursor's gone to the end and go to start and it goes to the start. Now in the video group, which is where we are, near the indicator. In the video group, uh, the use of this go to start is very simple. But if you're in the audio group, the go to start has a slightly modified function. If we put it, say, here, and then click go to start, you'll see it's actually stopped just after this voiceover segment. Um, that is a feature um, that cues the cursor for a follow-on voiceover recording that immediately follows this segment. And it's stopped on the first frame without audio after this segment. If I click Go to Start again, it does the same thing for this segment, same again for the next segment, and then, of course, it goes to the beginning. So that's the use of the go to start, go to end. Uh, this is very simple. This is just the play button. As you can see, as it's playing, the clip frame number is rolling, and so is the number of seconds. Just stop that with the stop button. Now, what else is there? Um, to change function groups, you just click the appropriate function group button here. And as you can see, these changes are reflected up here. This tells you which group you're in. Alternatively, if you are, say, in the video group, uh, an additional indicator is this pointer here that's saying this is the active line, which is the video line. You can quickly switch to the audio group by putting the cursor in the audio line, timeline, and double clicking. You'll see that the function has switched over. Similarly, if you're in the audio group, you can click in the video timeline, and you'll see that it's now switched back to the video group.